Okay, for the final part of the series, I want to, to show you some uh, final rendering settings and then how to render out the images and then do some basic post-production in Photoshop. So in the last uh, part of the tutorial, I was just uh, fine-tuning the lighting, fine-tuning the uh, rendering. So uh, what I'm gonna show you here is my lighting settings, my rendering settings. Uh, what I did do to um, get my lighting correct as I just fine-tune some of the settings to get the best results. So I dropped my multiplier down to 8, changed my Kelvin temperature to 3200, uh, 3, and then in the uh, materials dialog where I had that background HDRI illuminating the scene, I dropped that down to 8 as well. Uh, that gave me some slightly better results. And I'm just going to bring up the, uh, the render that I just previously did. Uh, so if I just kill uh, those, this was uh, a render that took 15 minutes and uh, this is with these light settings. So you can see here uh, I've dropped the multiplier and the Kelvins to 3200 and I'm getting a slightly better result and then uh, not as much of a, a strong light here in the background. So it all comes down to, to use the preference um, on what you want to achieve here. Sometimes it's better just to be um, a little bit darker than brighter because you can um, fine-tune these in the post-production. So with this, um, oh, one thing to note, um, you can see here I didn't texturize my hook on the wall and it's uh, giving me some strange results here. So instead of having to re-render this and wait another um, 40 minutes, I can go and do uh, region and I can just get that little region and anything that might be reflecting on the wall and just uh, re-render it out. So uh, I'm gonna uh, just go to that region and uh, go to the uh, the hook in the model. And just grab that and go to my materials and just make it uh, stainless steel. Now we can uh, re-render that, that image. Um, and uh, let's go and do a render and very quickly we'll see with uh, some of my new settings it just re-render that particular item so there we go so it's now uh, got rid of that if I just turn off that we've now got uh, an updated render without having to wait 40 minutes and 11 seconds Okay, so uh, before we move into uh, Photoshop for the final post-production, I just want to show you some other settings that I've added here inside of V-Ray. Um, I went to the uh, GI and I cranked it up to high. I put my subdivisions up to 60 and, um, uh, and drop samples to 40. Um, and drop rate. And then uh, I also cranked up my subdivisions in the light cache to 1200. And uh, that's pretty much it. So with that, um, I ran my render and I also turned on some render elements. And you can add a lot here. Um, there's numerous uh, V-Ray render elements you can add for uh, enhancing the output. I just uh, used uh, V-Ray reflection for the, the mirrors and then specular for the um, items here on the edges of the, uh, the metal components. And when you want to save that out, I'm just saving it as a basic uh, JPG file. Um, if we go to the, um, uh, where is it? Frame buffer, just uh, you can go to frame buffer, show last frame buffer. And when I want to save that out, um, with the actual uh, frame buffer, you can uh, save that each individual component. So here it uh, should be here. So show the last frame buffer. All right, so it's not showing for me at the moment. Um, but what you should be able to see is when you actually do that render, um, I think I need to re-render it again if I wanted to show this, but uh, what it did in the background is it um, uh, rendered those items and then when I go to save them out, I can uh, save them out as separate channels here. So that's all I've done. So if I want to um, save this demo one and just overwrite that uh, issue I had with the um, bright hook, I'll just save that. And I'm just doing it as a JPG. Um, 
you can use all these different file formats if you want to. Um, an open EXR image will actually contain a lot more information in it, um, and then there's TIFFs and PNGs, etc. So uh, I'm just going to use JPG to keep it simple. Save, override that. Okay. Now um, I'm going to open this up in uh, Photoshop. So just a quick shortcut, open with Photoshop. And I'm going to bring in those other uh, two render passes. One was the reflection and the other was the specular and uh, get this image looking a little bit sharper. So uh, there's numerous ways again you can do this in all these different applications. Uh, what I'm going to do is just um, uh, open um, the other applications uh, as recent places. Just uh, go here and go to Video 3 Max, Data, Render Output, and I'm going to uh, grab those other items. And uh, these just, just float in, in Windows here. And I haven't been using Photoshop for a while. I know you can start to, to muck around with the different workspaces and float it. Uh, I think it's a range float in all Windows. Um, this was sort of my, my preference on how I like to do things in the past. So uh, I'm going to... Um, Again, just, just float that out and uh, just, just drag and drop those and actually I'll just go control all copy paste and then control all copy and paste and then we don't need these anymore and uh, I'll just turn those off so now they're, they're, they're sitting within my scene um, so first thing I want to do is um, you can go through the steps of adjusting that image um, Photoshop has some some quick tools to auto tone auto contrast and then auto color you'll see so you can see that's looking um, kind of good with uh, some of the settings here I'm just going to uh, undo uh, and uh, try undo again just to go back to the original image um, what's always good practice is just to duplicate that layer and then just uh, turn it off so you've got um, a background copy to revert back to. Um, I, I will, I'll, go, I'll go with the um, auto tone, auto contrast, and auto color. I'm going to work with the Photoshop settings here. So if you just want to see the difference between the two, uh, Photoshop does, does a great job of just getting it looking kind of nice and sharp. But now I want to uh, start making a few adjustments to um, some of the levels, the curves, the color. So you can do it uh, here, go image adjustments and uh, do it this way, or uh, you can go in uh, through here with the um, uh, adjustments to that item, but you can control it a bit more. So uh, I'll go for levels first, and you can see here, it's like a, a linked level tool. I'll just bring this across, and uh, we can just crank it across a little bit to uh, illuminate that space a bit more and and typically you don't want to go um, outside this kind of gradient uh, curve graph what do you want to call it here um, if you do if you go too too far one way it's just going to go and wide out like that so I'm just going to uh, be kind of subtle um, don't go don't go too too crazy with it and um, when you turn it on and off you can start to see the, the difference. So I'm really starting to add a little bit more light in here um, but it's affecting some of the other uh, other items. So the great thing is you can you know, manipulate this as, as you go. Uh, next thing I want to do, I'm going to um, look at maybe some curves. And curves can be quite cool to adjust, a bit more control. And again, just be very uh, very subtle with you how you do this curve. So you can see here as I'm adjusting this, this lower lower part of the input output in the graph here. Um, it's just starting to bring light to more, more areas. And you can start to see a bit more of that wall. So uh, I don't want to go too much. There is an auto command here as well. So you could just go on auto. And it'll just turn it on and off. And you can see here the subtle difference. So it's looking good. And then uh, maybe the last one might be hue and saturation. So um, sometimes these images can look too saturated, so you can uh, drop that down a little bit, see if it's really bright, or just drop it down. Just subtly. Um, good rule of thumb is like maybe negative 15, and you can play around with lightness if you want as well. And again, just you know, very subtle changes. Um, and the great thing about using this type of process here is that um, you can turn them on and off. Okay, so those are just some of uh, of the items here. 
that uh, just shown. Where's my cue and saturation? Uh, five, wasn't it? Uh, so some of the items are shown. The next thing I want to do is just show you how to uh, work with these uh, layers. So I think this was our reflection. That was our uh, specular. You can, um, what was it? Rename, so you can go reflection. And again, um, you can start to set these up to be named in certain ways if you want to automate it from uh, uh, V-Ray. <laughs> okay, so uh, speculation reflection. Now, uh, I'm just going to turn off uh, reflection uh, of specular, and I want to uh, now have that reflection map um, uh, coming through as a different type of um, overlay. So. Uh, if I drop down to screen, for example, you can see here that changes the way that reflection works. Um, I could drop down to uh, what's another good one that works. So there's screen or overlay. Um, overlay is probably not as good. Or lighten. And you can start to see uh, down here starting to lighten some of the dark shadows under the, under the tub. Um, but I think uh, usually uh, screen is the best one to use. And it doesn't have to be uh, a full adjustment here. You can see um, over here on the left the flush plate for that uh, WC is really starting to reflect. So we can just drop that down to, to 25 for example. And it's just a subtle difference and you can see that the illumination or the reflection is looking a little better. Uh, so the same for specular. Um, so specular you could um, uh, flick to again we'll just start off with uh, screen and there's a few other tools like you can actually just uh, rotate um, your mouse button and go through the different type of settings here and what we're really after is just to um, show the best uh, setting to uh, push, push like a, um, a specular light on the, on the tap things so uh, let me just go back a little bit and it all comes down to, to user preference, I guess, at the end of the day. Um, and uh, I'll just try and keep it simple. So let's go for, um, again, screen. And it's just a subtle difference you can see here. It's just starting to illuminate a little bit. Um, and the other one could be just uh, overlay. No, not overlay. So, yeah, we'll go for we'll go for screen. I think one of the ones I used to use in the past might have been um, linear burn, but uh, it's not likely today. Okay, so we'll just go to, to to screen. You can see here that's just starting to um, add that to uh, these items, and again, you can drop it down to twenty five. And it all comes down to user preference on on what you want to see here. So this is more like the artistic. Uh, again, you can actually move it down the, uh, the tree here. So if you put it down here, you can see it changes just a little bit, but you've got all these type of effects affecting uh, those images. So uh, finally here, um, I might even just drop that reflection down to 15. And here's my, my final image. So if I just turn all of these settings off, just so you can see the original one. That's the original image looking a bit flat. Then um, I'm working with that background copy which has those automatic adjustments, turning on reflection, turning on specular, and then uh, turning on those final adjustments to make it uh, look a little bit more photo real. Uh, and with that, I'm just going to uh, save as. Um, I can save it as a uh, PSD file. Okay, and then uh, maybe for the final file, you uh, might want to save it. Um, I can save it as a, as a TIFF, for example save um, and it may ask for different types of compressions um, so there's a lot um, going on here with um, anybody who wants to know more about this um, Photoshop has some good information sorry Adobe has some good information on this for OK um, and uh, I'll just increase that so when we go to our output huh? data and output we have our uh, final image created and uh, ready to be shown to customers. So this is something that I call you know, reasonably good. Um, with a bit more time and effort, you could really get this looking um, incredibly real. Um, this has just been a, a short 
series of how to get up and running with Revit to 3ds Max, render using V-Ray, bring in photorealistic people using render people, and then finally just uh, tune that image inside of Photoshop. Thanks very much.